Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to transition to this space of opening our eyes, our heart, our mind, and our understanding. May the word reach each of us in the way that it needs to reach us and speak to us in the way that it needs to speak to us. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme today the manifestation of God. The manifestation of God. About a week ago, I left home early on a Saturday morning to meet up with someone. It was unusually early for my body, and so the rising was strained. But somehow, I had managed, if only partially awake, to make it out of the house on time, to get to my meeting on time. Halfway there, I reached for my phone. But where was it? It was not on me or in my bag or plugged up to the car charger. I searched lightly and then aggressively with a sense of panic settling in. I was going to be on time if I kept going in the direction that I was going. But as I kept driving to my appointment, I realized I needed my phone. There were items on my phone I needed for the meeting. I also needed to be accessible to my family. I had to do it. No matter the cost, I had to turn the car around and go back home and get my phone. I know I'm not the first to acknowledge this uncanny relationship that we have with our phones. I am not myself without her. She holds invaluable information like my calendar and alerts. She keeps me sane and in between moments. She carries more information that pertains to me than any other device. And if at all possible, I try never ever to leave her at home. The psalmist today is asserting something similar about God. Just don't even leave home without God. Your day will be a struggle. You will make decisions not in your own best interest. You will overlook and miss things you shouldn't have had. You will operate from a place of deficiency. You will try to do things in your own power and skill set. You will mistakenly believe you can manage your life all on your own. It's not worth it and costly to start your day without God. So while you may have been unconsciously winging it, the author is advocating to carry God with you. Listen once again to Psalm 19, verses 7 through 9. This is a different translation. I kind of like it. Messenger. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy, easy on the eyes. God's reputation is 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee. The decisions of God are accurate down to the nth degree. Did you hear that? The revelation, signposts, life map, directions, and decisions of God help us to navigate our life. Ever been lost or just not sure? The other day, a family member of mine needed to get from point A to B. He was unsure of this new journey. He had never traveled. But with signposts and maps, I was able to guide him to the next stop. And markers, God is able to help us on this journey navigate life. Don't leave home without, without God. In fact, don't start your day without, without God. That's not all we find in Psalm 19. A lady gets a Tory Burch bag for Valentine's from her lover. She doesn't realize it's a name brand, so she keeps looking inside the bag for her gift. 
She's unzipping zippers and shaking it upside down in hopes that the gift will reveal itself. When finally the gift giver lets her know the bag itself, <laughs> Tory Burch bag, is the gift. In Psalm, there is more than instruction. There's more in the bag. We can and should expect more because Psalm does give us more. From the beginning, this psalmist is telling us about the sovereignty of God. The messenger, verse 1 through 4, reads, God's glory is on tour in the skies. God's craft on exhibit across the horizon. Madam Day holds classes every morning, and Professor Knight lectures each evening. With verse 4 reading, God makes a huge dome for the sun, a super dome. When was the last time you just noticed the sky? Or noticed nature screaming? Or especially during this season, life breaking through the ground? Or the sun was so bright and strong you had to turn sideways to look at it? I sort of have haphazardly been following Taylor Swift and Beyonce tours all over the world. It appears as far as tours go, these two ladies know how to give a tour. I am still personally shocked, and maybe it dates me, that anyone would pay $1,000 for a ticket to be crammed in with others to see Taylor or Beyonce. But one of my friends last year <laughs> announced she had snagged a ticket for $700. And her crew, they parked two miles away. Then they caught an Uber to Soldier Field. And then they trekked for 45 minutes to get to their seats. And that was well before the Beyonce concert. But I still follow trying to see what others see. I have to say that I was shocked that Taylor Swift just last month had one of the largest concerts ever in Melbourne, Australia. On February the 16th, Taylor opened with the largest crowd ever, 96,000 people. And the next night, she repeated it, 96,000 people. Can you imagine singing or saying anything to 96,000 people? Her prophet, that means after you pay all the bills, was 100 million from the Australian tours. The text today reminds us, maybe not as many are watching, that God's glory is on tour. Amen. The Lord of Lord, how majestic are you in all the earth is on tour. How great is our God is on tour. Awesome, awesome are you, Lord, is on tour. And you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about all of this disappearing because God's craft is on exhibit for all to see. God's beauty is around us waiting to be seen and observed and taken in. A hot spring here, a waterfall there, a river here, an ocean there, a sunset here, a rising there, mountains and flowers and forests and rainbow and animals on tour and trees. This comedian was sharing how she had this large tree in the back of her yard, and the, the tree had gotten so big that it was no longer good and it needed to be removed. And so she called the tree people, and she said, hey, tree people, I need you to remove this large tree out of my yard. And after they removed it, when she expected the work that they had done, she came and she saw a big stump sitting in her yard. And so she called the tree people up and said, yeah, you cut the tree down, but you, you left a stump. The tree people said, we don't, we don't deal with stumps. We cut trees down. You need to call the stump people. So she called the stump people, and she said, hey, look, I'm going to be out of town, but hey, can you... Can you fix and get this stump up? The stump people came, got the stump up. She came home. She noticed a big hole in the ground. She called the stump people up and said, hey, look, you got the stump, but you left this big hole in the middle of my yard. And you can guess what the stump people said. The stump people said, we remove stumps. We don't do landscape. You need to call the landscaper. She called the landscape people and said, hey, landscape people, there's a big hole in my yard. I need it to be fixed up. She came back. And guess what they put in her yard? A tree. <laughs> a small tree planted in the hole 
God's trees in all their shapes and form, along with nature, allow us to see God's glory on tour. I love the redwoods in California that stand 380 feet tall. God's glory. God's glory is on tour. There are some that believe that you can manifest a situation. That is, you think about a situation long enough, it can be yours. Have you ever been thinking about someone and then they called you? Or you called someone and they said, what, I was just thinking about you. Some believe that's manifestation. If we think about God in such a way, God will manifest. This text reminds us that God makes an appearance to us. God appears in nature. God appears in the lives of those who follow God. God appears in the scriptures and other holy texts. God appears in the humble prayers of God's children. God appears in music that is spirit-filled. God appears in hymns. God appears in the gifts of protection and strength and courage offered to those in need. God appears in our faith community, the relationships we have one with another. God is always making appearances, even today, even today as we are going to be invited to the communion table. God is making an appearance before us. You know what Celia in the color purple had to say about God's glory? I think it makes God mad when we walk, when we walk by God's glory in a field somewhere and don't notice it. People think pleasing God is all God cares about, but any fool living in the world can see it's always trying to please us back. As beautiful as God's creation is, we are invited to linger. Don't be so busy. You don't take time to pause for Lent. In the midst of life's chaos, threatening to undo us, we find serenity in the canvas of creation that points to the internal majesty of God. This psalm invites us to transformation through first observing God's glory and heeding God's instruction. And it slides into home base for a home run with the scripture we have heard it before, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Today, I began with a story about leaving home without my cell phone. I had made it halfway to my destination, and already I was lost. Most can relate to feeling incomplete without it. But how often have I left home without God and never looked back? What about you? And yet, it is even more critical that we not leave home without God. The psalm encourages us, don't leave home. Don't leave home without God. How incomplete are we without God? It's worth pausing. It's worth stopping and even turning around and going all the way back home if you have to. Can I make it without God today? Can, can we get by without God? God is sovereign. God's glory is still on tour. And it bothers God that we don't take notice. It's no way we could have woken up today and not seen God's majesty pouring out or to step out the door on the way to church and not sense God's majesty. See, God's beauty throughout the world, especially in spite of the ugly that is happening in our world, it's important to invite God on this journey daily. It's important that we don't leave home without God. The manifestation of God. Lent is an open door. Keep coming and going. Insist God comes and watch out for your life to be transformed. Amen.